Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala seyyidin mürselin. Seyyidina Muhammed ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem teslimen kethira. Esselamu aleykum ve rahmetullahi ve barakat. This is Imam Zeyd Shakir. And I'm here with the second uh, part of this class that's uh, recorded primarily for the Muslim Community Center. But anyone who happens upon it, hopefully it will contain benefit. So last week we were talking about the descriptions of the worldly life, al-hayat al-dunya. This week we'll talk about the descriptions of the afterlife, the hereafter, and then the various realms of responsibility we have in this world as they relate to our destiny in the hereafter. And so uh, why, do we, why, do we, why did we start here? Because we mention and we emphasize we live in this world undeniably, but we live for the hereafter. So we live in this world, but we live for the hereafter. And this is something we should keep impressed or that we should keep in the forefront, forefront rather of our consciousness. Because many people, if not most people today, they live in this world and they live for this world and there's no active consciousness of the hereafter. And so what are the attributes that, and we emphasize we're rooting this in the Quran because this is the month of Ramadan, it's a Ramadan class, Shah Ramadan. So this is the month of the Qur'an, the month of Quranic guidance, the month of clarification, the month of distinguishing between right and wrong based on the guidance of the Qur'an. So we wanted to root the class in the Qur'an. So the life, uh, excuse me, I know some of you in California might not have broken your fast yet. I apologize <clears throat> for drinking, but I'm on the East Coast. The Akira in the Quran, Hayatul Al Hayatul Akira, the afterlife, is described as the real life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وأن الدار الآخرة لحي الحيوان لو كانوا يعلمون. So it says that verily the life hereafter that is the true life. It is the true life if they only knew. Because once we internalize the reality that the hereafter is the true life, it impacts how we live our life here. It impacts our behavior. Once we know that basically this is an illusion, we've seen the illusion of strength and power. What do we say as Muslims? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There's no strength or power except with Allah. So we had the most powerful economy in human history, right? That's what our president was saying. We have the most powerful economy in human history. It's undone in two weeks by something so small we can't detect it with our native with our naked eye so what what's the point that economic strength was the illusion of strength and that's the nature of this world this world is an illusion and the real world is the life hereafter if they but knew if they but knew may allah ta'ala bless us to know Without the wall. <clears throat> the life hereafter is the abode of permanence. Allah Ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Innama hadhihi al-hayatu al-dunya mata'u wa inna al-akhirata hiya daru al-qarar So Allah says, verily, this worldly life is but an enjoyment and the life hereafter is the abode of permanence. 
dwelling therein forever. And we pray each and every one of us dwells forever in paradise that we come to know eternal bliss with no end. That is the abode of permanence. And this is the abode of temporal, of a temporal reality and nature. كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَ وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Everything, everyone in this world, this lower world, is perishing. Only Allah remains. May we remain with Allah and find permanence with Allah and find stability with Allah. One of the reasons we're tossed and turned Brothers and sisters, we're up and down. Our lives are like uh, someone on a roller coaster, up and down, in and out, twists and turns. It's because our hearts are attached to this world, and this world is a reality, is it rather, this world is an abode of constant changing vicissitudes. And so we change with the times, with the news, with the comings, the goings, the births and the deaths. But Allah is unchanging reality. Can Allah? Wala shay'a ma'ahu wa huwa al-an ala ma alayhi kan. There was Allah and there was nothing with Allah and He is now as He was then. Unchanging reality, permanence. And so when we detach our hearts from the world and we attach our hearts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we experience that stability and people notice it. Say, man, you, does anything upset you? Man, I'm, I feel like I'm in a washing machine and you come in, you're on an even kill. That's the fruit of a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This world <clears throat> is the best of the two lives. This worldly, excuse me, the life of the hereafter is the best, best of the two lives. Allah Ta'ala says in that regard, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَلَأْ دَارُ الْآخِرُ تُخَيْرُ لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ أَفَلَا تَعْكِلُونَ That the life hereafter is best for those who have certainty and mindful, uh, who, rather who have consciousness of Allah, uh, will you not then realize this? That the, the life hereafter, this is the best for the believers. Why? Because the believers believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The believers believe in the unseen. And the belief in Allah creates a longing for Allah and a love for Allah. And where is that longing and that love fulfilled? In this world or in the next? It's fulfilled in the next. Man ahabba liqa Allahi, ahabba Allahu liqa'ah. One who loves and longs to meet Allah, Allah longs to meet them. A person will be with the one he or she loves. If we love Allah and we love the Messenger of Allah, our union with them, our meeting with them is not in this world. It's in the Akhirah. How then could the Akhirah not be best? Faces on that day will be glowing, gazing upon their Lord, however that will be. But that's in the Akhirah. And that will be the Eid and Jannah. We're looking forward to Eid al-Fitr. But the Eid and Jannah is so much incomparably greater and that Eid and Jannah is when we meet our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorified and exalted is He. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. 
The world hereafter can be a source of great torment for those who did not behave wisely and use their life and their time and their health and their wealth wisely in this world. Allah Ta'ala says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَلَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ And in the hereafter, they will have a great, great punishment. May Allah ward off any punishment for us, from us rather. The life hereafter is the abode of a ultimate accountability. Like we're, 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 we're accountable to our actions, brothers and sisters. We don't just live here idly wasting our time. We are recount, uh, accountable rather for every word that we speak. We're recount, we are accountable for every action we undertake. There is accountability and we're accountable in this world, but ultimately our ultimate and our deepest and our most intense accountability is in the next. May Allah give us tawfiq. Allah Ta'ala says in that regard, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ أُولَٰئِكَ يُجْزَوْنَ الْغُرْفَةَ بِمَا صَبَرُوا وَيَلَّقَوْنَ فِيهَا تَحِيَتِهُمْ وَسَلَامًا these are though these will be given or be rewarded the rooms and paradise for their patient perseverance and they will meet therein greetings and peace and so the world hereafter is a world where we will be recompensed they are recompensed they're given their jaza. The Eid is a recompense for the effort of fasting. And so it's called Yomul Jawa is the day of the prizes. Where they are given their prize that they earned. And in Jannah, everything we did, not just the fast of Ramadan, we will be rewarded for or conversely punished for. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq, taysir, and kabul. As we mentioned last week, if you notice most of these characteristics associated with the akhirah, they are targhib. They're creating longing and creating desire for the jannah. And most of the, uh, the qualities mentioned for the worldly life are targhib, pushing us away from it. And there's a wisdom in that we discussed last week. May Allah give us tawfiq. So we mentioned uh, the relationship between the person and the hereafter. Uh, that relationship is a relationship of responsibility. So we mentioned we live in this world, but we live for the next. And so the relationship of the life of this world and the next, the next life, is the life and the abode and the realm where we will be recompensed and held accountable, literally asked. Sa'ala yas'alu. Sa'ilun mas'ul. So he asked, he is asking uh, the one questioning and the one being questioned, the mas'ul. So mas'uliya is being questioned question given uh, having to account for everything we did in this world and I want you brothers and sisters I want you to think about whenever a negative thought not a negative action we want to be beyond the realm of negative actions every time a negative thought comes to you before you entertain it ask yourself how will I answer to Allah concerning this thought? And if, if you can consciously remind yourself and envision the time you will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will be asked about that thought, you will be able to repulse it inshallah ta'ala. And if we can repulse negative thoughts, 
how easy will it be to repulse negative actions? And that's one of the wisdoms of Ramadan in this sense. It runs parallel to what I just said. Because if we can resist good lawful food and drink and lawful relations, how much easier will it be outside of Ramadan to resist unlawful food, unlawful drink, and unlawful actions. So Ramadan is a great training for us. <clears throat> that responsibility uh, in uh, this life, it's, it's individual and social responsibility. So the authors of the text, we mentioned Nadratul Naim, Fi Makarim Min Akhlaqi Rasul Al Karim. They, they mention several realms of responsibility. So we'll go through those inshallah ta'ala. And then next week we will enter into the main topic we want to emphasize. And that's the realm, this world being the abode of test trials and tribulations. We're in the midst of one right now, the COVID-19 situation. So uh, they say that individual responsibility an individual is responsibility responsible for themselves himself or herself concerning the gifts that Allah has given them uh, intellectually their hearing their seeing their body uh, all of these things are gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're going to be held accountable in terms of how do we use them how do we use this incredible intellect Allah has given us how do we use this physical strength that Allah has given us? How do we use the wealth that Allah bestowed upon us? How do we guide those children that Allah entrusted us with? How do we respond to those parents that Allah brought us into the world by their means? Individual responsibility in these various realms. The responsibility, and we just mentioned uh, this, for the individual vis-a-vis -vis his or her family. So how did the individual respond in the realm of familial relationships? This is going to be something that we have to answer for. The responsibility of the individual to his or her blood relatives. So we, this is again, this is, and, and this is a, a realm of responsibility. Do we assist them in their moments of need? Do we maintain contact with them? Do we share the blessings Allah bestowed upon us? Were we open and receptive uh, to, to receiving their advice and their counsel? And all of those realms of activity that involve our blood relatives we're responsible for. And Allah mentions all of these in the Quran. Uh, the fourth one, the, re the responsibility of the individual vis-a-vis -vis his or her wider community. And so do we help to advance our community? Well, we are, ha are a responsible, productive member of our communities. Well, we are a burden on our community. Do we terrorize our community? So this is a realm of responsibility that the human being is accountable for. The fifth one, the responsibility of this generation to future generations. Do we prepare them to meet the future uh, responsibly and maturely? Do we uh, instill in them the proper beliefs concerning their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we orient them properly in deen? Do we provide the foundation for their economic prosperity? And this is, unfortunately, if we look at this system that we live under, there's massive failure. There's massive failure in the sense that spending for the well-being of our future generations. And that means what? A habitable planet. But if, if we are trying to squeeze every last dollar out of fossil fuels, the dirtiest forms of coal, the dirtiest forms of oil, now shell oil, 
the dirtiest forms of gas production, fracking, which uh, endangers our aquifers, for massive profits of corporations and individuals and stockholders, a small percentage of our, of our people, generally more, more elderly people. And we don't care for our future generation. We don't care if we give our children a planet that's not habitable, where aquifers have been destroyed because of fracking, where our ice caps have melted because we're burning so much for our fossil fuels, et cetera, then we betrayed the trust that Allah has deposited with us concerning our future generations. The sixth is the, master, the responsibility of our community towards other communities. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You are the best of communities, ummas, this Muslim community raised up for the benefit of all the other communities. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. Are we fulfilling our responsibility to them? First and foremost, are we bringing the message of Islam to them in an intelligible uh, fashion? Are we demonstrating through our words, our actions, our deeds, our character, our state of being, the virtue of Islam before we even open our mouths? Are we helping to set an example ecologically? One of the great benefits of, of this COVID-19 Ramadan is as a Muslim community in North America, we're not dumping the tons of rubbish from our iftars into our environment. The styrofoam cups, the plastic forks and knives by the ton as a community, filling up the dumpster every night there's an iftar. We've given the, uh, we've been placed in a situation where that particular responsibility towards the world, the global community, we're not, it's been lightened from us. There's a blessing, there's a silver lining to every cloud. May Allah give us tawfiq, taysir, kabul, and understanding. So we have a responsibility to those children in many different levels to make sure the seeds of proper belief are planted in their hearts, to make sure that the love of the Messenger of Allah are planted in their hearts, to make sure that we are organizing our societies economically so that they will have the ability to, to prosper and to raise their families and to have viable economic systems to make all of that possible. The seventh one he mentions is the responsibility of the human being to other creatures in the sense that we are the custodian of Allah in his earth. And so that relates to what we were just saying about eco ecological devastation. We have a responsibility to those creatures. When, when, when the wild animals can't drink clean water because we polluted all of the streams, we failed in our responsibility towards them. When they can't live in peace because we've destroyed all of their habitat and in, they intrude into our communities because our communities are in the forests and the plains where they once roamed, then we kill them as an unwanted intruders. In reality, we are the unwanted intruders. We are the polluters. We are the, those who devastate habitat. We have a responsibility to those creatures. May Allah bless us to have the consciousness to fulfill it. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So those are the realms of responsibility that the author mentions. We ask Allah to give us tawfiq. Now, uh, next week, we'll move directly into the topic of the trials and tribulations. And the trials and tribulations are structured around those responsibilities. So we're tested in terms of our dealings with ourselves. We're testing in terms of our dealing 
with our families. We're tested in terms of our dealings within our community. We're tested, I don't want to go to the masjid. Those Muslims there, they think they're all this and that. That's a test within the community. We're tested in terms of our dealing with other communities. So this so-called phenomenon of Islamophobia, that's a test in our relation with other communities. And so in all of these realms of responsibility, there are trials and tribulations and there's success and there's failure. Inshallah, we'll go into this deeper next week. We pray that what we said today has been of some benefit. We pray that you continue to be, that you continue to be blessed during Ramadan. We pray that, uh, that all of those who are battling with this COVID uh, situation, that you're given good health. We pray that those who haven't been afflicted remain protected. May Allah protect all of us, protect our families, our neighbors, our loved ones, our fellow citizens, and the denizens of this planet that we share with, that we share with them. May Allah give you tawfiq, tasir, kabul. This is Imam Zayd Shakir. Barakallahu fikum. Ramadan Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.